In this video lecture, we will be looking at database keys, um, specifically surrogate keys, foreign keys, and the concept of referential integrity. So let's start by talking about surrogate keys. Surrogate keys is a, time of, is a type of primary key whose values are assigned by the database management system. So there could be situations where we have a table and they have only composite keys that are present and it might not be a viable solution to use a composite key. Again, a composite key is a key that has more than one attribute that can be combined together to make the key. So in those instances, we might have the database management system create a primary key or we might create a field and have that field's value auto generated by the database management system to become the key. These types of keys are called surrogate keys because they are assigned by the database management system. In many cases, primary keys are surrogate keys because it's not feasible to manually create a unique value each time a new record is added. Examples, for example, your student ID. When a new student joins a university or college, it's not possible for someone to manually keep creating student IDs for them. So we have the system auto-generate a student ID. In the case of GGC, we have 9,000 numbers. So the system is set up to randomly generate a 9,000 number that has never been used before for a student. So the same applies for customer ID, employee IDs in many cases. And in these kinds of situations, we call these primary keys as surrogate keys because they are auto-generated by the database management system. Next, we'll be talking about foreign keys. But before we get to foreign keys, it's always important to keep in mind that relational databases are based by creating relationships between tables. Because when we started talking about relational databases, we talked about the difference of a relational database and a simple spreadsheet. We create re relational databases by splitting our different themes into separate tables so that we can avoid problems of insert, update, and delete um, issues. So that's why we split our themes into different tables. But we need to also bring our data together and we can connect tables together through relationships so that we can bring data together. Examples include if we are keeping track of customers and products in two separate tables, we still need to know the customers that buy products. So we might need to generate a report for that and we connect tables together and link them through relationships. Other examples, if you have a doctor table and a patient table, we definitely want to see the doctors that are the patients and the doctors they're seeing and vice versa. So we would need to connect these tables together. Student enrolling in a course is another example. Student is a table and if we have a table called course, we can link these tables together so that we know which are the courses that a particular student registers in. So foreign keys are, is an attribute in a table that references the primary key in another table. In other words, we use foreign keys to connect and link two tables together. So both the foreign key and the referenced primary key from the other table must be of the same data type. And that is important because the foreign key is going to be a copy of the primary key in the other table and we need to make sure that they are having the same data types. Foreign keys help with establishing relationships between tables. So let's look at an example. So in this particular database schema, we are looking at two tables here that are related together. We have the customer table and then we have the rental table. In the customer table, we are keeping track of the driver's license, last name, first name, and telephone. And in the rental table, we are keeping track of rental ID, driver's license, rental date, bike ID, time out, time in. So just by looking at this, we can know that this is a part of a database that's keeping track of customers and bikes that they are renting. So in this particular case, when we look in the rental table, we can see that we have driver's license as an attribute. Driver's license in the rental table would be an example of a foreign key because it's linked to driver's license in the customer table. 
From a technical point, we don't need to name the foreign key with the exact name of the primary key that it's referring to. But keep in mind that relational databases are self-describing, which means that when people look at the schema, they need to understand things. So that is why we stick to giving them very similar names so that we can understand by looking at the rental table that it has driver's license. And when we look at the customer table, the primary key is driver's license. So again, keep in mind that foreign keys reference the primary key in the relating table. So in this case, driver's license is a primary key in the customer table and driver's license is a foreign key in the rental table. So let's look at another example based on the same database that we have been talking about the bike and renting. So here we have bike and rental. When we look at these tables, we should be able to identify which table has the foreign key. So when we look at these tables, we look at the bike table. It has bike ID as the primary key, description, cost per hour, and bike type as attributes. We look at the rental table. It has rental ID, driver's license, rental date, bike ID, time out, time in. So these are the attributes in the rental table. But by looking at the rental table, we see it has bike ID, which is the primary key in the bike table. So we can say that the rental table has the foreign key and the foreign key is bike ID and it's referencing to the primary key bike ID in the bike table. So referential integrity in the context of establishing relationships between table is an important concept to understand and this ensures that we have quality maintained when we are relating two tables together. So the property of referential integrity ensures that if you have an attribute or a table field that references another field in another table, which is a foreign key, there should be a matching value for that attribute in the other table. So let's look at this example here. We have bike and we have rental. We know that the rental table has bike ID, which is a foreign key. What referential integrity ensures is that in the rental table, values of bike ID need to match with values in the bike um, table for bike ID. So let's look at the record so it's more clear what this means. So here we're looking at a snapshot of the bike table and the rental table to look at the actual records or rows. And when we look in the rental table here, we have bike ID, which is a foreign key, which has values one, two. And when you come into the bike table, you're going to see that bike ID one actually exists in the bike table. Bike ID two also exists in the bike table. So this is what a referential integrity ensures. It ensures that when you enter values for bike ID, which is a foreign key in the rental table, you need to have a value that matches with the bike ID in the bike table. And this makes sense because if you're going to enter a bike ID, for example, 100, and it doesn't have a matching value in the bike table, this data is not, it fails to have integrity or it's not consistent because you do not have a bike that you can reference to. So, to avoid people accidentally making errors, we establish referential integrity between related tables so we can avoid people. And if someone tries to accidentally enter a bike ID in the rental table that doesn't have a value that matches with the bike ID in the bike table, the system, the database management system would not let you completely enter that record into the rental table. So lastly, let's look at another example to recap what a foreign key is. So here we have an example of two tables, owners and pets that are related together. So when we have two tables that are related together in a relational database, they have to be related using foreign keys. So we have to go through the fields in both the tables and we can see that in the pets table, we have owner ID which is the primary key in the owner's table. So we can say that the pet table 
has the foreign key of owner ID. So that is important to first identify. And what does referential integrity ensure? In this case, we can say that referential integrity ensures that when you enter data in the pet table for a value for owner ID needs to match with the value of an owner ID that exists in the owner table. So you cannot enter an owner ID value that doesn't exist in the owner stable. So that is important again to ensure we have referential integrity.